how do you proclaim the Messiah has come to a group of people who aren't waiting for a Messiah? That's the big question for this week. Uh, welcome to Drawing the Bible. I'm Steve Thomason, and if you've been following me in this live stream for the last uh, 11 weeks or so, uh, you might be thinking, hey, what happened? It's Friday morning. It's not Thursday at 2. You're absolutely right. And that's because it's September and my schedule has changed. Um, during the summer, I was on campus. I'm a professor at Luther Seminary. I was on campus Tuesdays and Wednesdays and home on Thursdays. Um, I'm home on Mondays and Fridays all year long, but I chose to work from home on Thursdays during the summer. And that's why I was able to do the live stream on Thursday afternoon. But now I'm back on campus uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I decided to switch the live stream to Friday mornings um, as I'm doing this live stream, tracking my progress through uh, creating a cartoonist guide to Acts, uh, drawing Acts as a graphic novel. So this week um, we are coming to Acts chapter 17, which is Paul, the Apostle Paul, in the city of Athens, which is really a, a very famous, obviously, well, Acts is so much is famous in Acts. So let me catch you up from where we were last week. Uh, we've been making great progress through the book. Uh, my goal each week is to do five, complete five pages a week uh, of the painting portion. So if we come to cartoonistbible.com, and oh, by the way, if you're online with me live, um, I just invite you to drop a note in the chat, say hello. I'm on YouTube and Facebook, and I can see the chats from both streams. So uh, glad you're with me. So uh, this quick checkup, cartoonistbible.com. Go to Acts. And last week, we were doing uh, pages 21 through 25. And so let me just uh, let you see those in their finished state. So um, we have just had the breakup. Uh, LB is with us. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Um, we just had the breakup between Paul and Barnabas. That happened the week before last. And so, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's not correct. Paul and Barnabas are starting their trip to Asia Minor, to Pamphylia and Pisidia, but John Mark abandons them. That's what he leaves them. We don't know exactly why he returns to Jerusalem. We find out later that it causes a fight. But we see that um, they are in the synagogue in Antioch and Pisidia, and they're invited to speak. So here we have uh, Paul's first big recorded speech to a Jewish audience. And this is an epic speech. It's kind of like the template of how Paul presented the Messiah to those who are actually waiting for a Messiah. And he does it through reasoning through the Hebrew scripture, which makes total sense. Um, so they're like super interested, but then some religious leaders are like, hey, the Bible doesn't say that. And Paul is a heretic, and so they reject him. So this is the moment when they turn to the Gentiles, and then the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. So we come to page 22, and we see this. Uh, I love this section of, of Acts. Uh, so the Jewish religious leaders, they stir up the uh, Greek leaders of Antioch, Pisidia, and they throw Paul and Barnabas out. So they come to Iconium. The spirit comes on the Iconiumites. Um, but the crowd is divided because they are also being stirred up by the unbelieving Jews. Uh, those Jews who are unbelieving, not remember. Yeah. So the crowd is divided. Some of the people love Paul and Barnabas. Some want to stone them to death. So they leave Iconium and they go to Lystra. And here we have this amazing six part story. And this is what I painted last week during the live stream. Um, uh, Paul brings healing to this man who's been lame so now he can walk and the people they think that Paul and Barnabas are Zeus and Hermes because this is a this is a Greek city there's no synagogue here so they don't go to the synagogue first this is a purely Gentile region uh, Greek they worship the Greek gods of the ancient Greek uh, uh, religions Zeus and Hermes and so the only thing they know how to do is make sacrifices to gods in the flesh and they're like no don't do that and but then you can see this red line, those Jewish uh, leaders, they come and they stir up the crowd against Paul and Barnabas. And so they stone Paul and they leave him for dead, but he doesn't die. And so Paul and Barnabas, they go to Derby 
And then from Derby, they appoint elders and the church spreads and it's pretty amazing. And I need to put my, uh, I need to put my phone on silent. Sorry about that. And um, so then, so the church is now spread through the region, uh, which later we would just generically call the Galatian region, but it's actually not exactly Galatia. So they do that. That's the first missionary journey. They return from Antioch, Pisidia. Paul and Barnabas return to Antioch in Syria, which is at this point the center of the Christian church, um, at least the church that's trying to reach out to Gentiles. So uh, and then in chapter 15, we see this picks up from where we were last week in my live stream. Um, the, there's a group of of Jewish followers of Jesus. So remember, this is an internal uh, church matter now. We're not talking like Jews versus Christians. This is Jewish Christians versus non-Jewish Christians or Jewish Christians who want to invite non-Jewish Christians. That's the debate. And so uh, Paul gets really upset when people say that his Gentile friends have to be circumcised and follow the Torah Hey, Becky Blau, loved watching these. Thanks, Becky, for being here. Um, thanks for leaving a comment. Sorry, I missed it. I'm not sure exactly when you left it, but so glad that you're here. Okay, so then Acts chapter 15, boom, the big first council of the church. We call it the, the Jerusalem council. But James is the leader, the brother of Jesus. He's the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And so these folks, they state their case. And they're like, look, hey, you have to be a circumcised law following Jewish person in order to actually be a disciple of the Messiah. And we believe Jesus is the Messiah, but you have to come into the covenant of the law and circumcision in order to be a follower of Jesus. And so here we have like the recap of what's happened in Acts so far. Peter says, ah, uh, remember the story of Cornelius back in Acts chapter 10? Yeah, I don't think it's true. I saw the Holy Spirit come on uncircumcised Roman centurion and his family, so I think you're wrong. Then Paul and Barnabas are like, hey, we were just in the Gentile region, and the Spirit is going wild there. And so James is like, yeah, uh, prophet said this was going to happen, so uh, we're gonna, not going to argue with the Holy Spirit. So they send this letter back to Antioch, and we add Judas and Silas to the mix, and there's only four things that the the Jews the Christians in Jerusalem who are all Jewish uh, say to the non-Jewish people who want to follow Jesus there's only four things that we think that you should probably check out like don't eat what's been sacrificed idols abstain from eating blood abstain from what is strangled abstain from fornication these are all pretty good guidelines but you don't have to be a law follower you don't have to be circumcised and all the men in the group are like whoo that's a relief and page 24, we come now, Acts 15. And so uh, Paul says, hey, Barnabas, let's go back to those churches. Let's spread that good news. And Barnabas wants to bring John Mark. But remember, John Mark's the one that left. And Paul's like, I don't think so. This guy deserted us. And they have this big fight. This is really interesting. Uh, I love the fact that Acts includes this, that Paul and Barnabas have a fight. And who knows? I mean, they're both wrong. I mean, it's just like, Thank you. Church people fight and church leaders fight and they don't agree and they split and they go different ways. And that's just how life is. <laughs> and so Paul and t Paul takes John Mark uh, and actually retraces the steps of their first journey, goes to Cyprus. And so Paul says, hey, Silas, why don't you come with me? And so Paul and Silas, they head back uh, a different route. They go the northern route, the land route to those towns. So they come back to Lystra, and this is the place where Paul was stoned and left for dead. And there's this young man named Timothy, who has a Jewish mother and a Greek father. So Timothy is not circumcised. And Paul's like, so interestingly enough, Paul says to this man, because he has Jewish blood in him, um, ethnically Jewish blood in him, he's like, sorry, buddy, but well, we need to circumcise you if we want our Jewish brothers and sisters, to actually listen to you. So Timothy is circumcised. And then Paul, Timothy, and Silas, they proclaim the good news that, hey, we've got this letter from the our Christian family in Jerusalem, and you guys are accepted. That's really great news. And then 
Uh, Paul wants to go to Ephesus. Holy Spirit doesn't let him. Paul wants to go to Bithynia. And the Holy Spirit doesn't let him. So they end up in Troas, which is not his plan. I've got a whole thing about that, but I'm not going to distract it. There they have the vision of the man in Macedonia. He's like, come help us. So here, boom, we have the author of the book, Luke. We shift from first person, I mean, from third person to first person where we immediately tried to cross over and God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. So it seems as if Luke joins the traveling party in Troas. That's so interesting. And so they go from Troas over to Macedonia and they end up in the city of Philippi where we encounter Lydia, who's just an amazing character. Lydia hears Paul's message of the Messiah she is baptized and she offers her home as the base of operation for the church in Philippi, which is really cool. And then uh, we come to uh, the second half of Acts 16, and there's this little uh, slave girl who has this divinizing spirit, the python spirit. And uh, Paul casts the spirit out of her, which means the money for the, her owners is out the window. And so the owners drag them before the magistrates, stir up trouble. And they are beaten and thrown into prison. And then we come now into this week. So this is what I've been painting this week. Um, yesterday I painted these pages. So Paul and Silas are in prison. They're singing hymns and praising God. There's an earthquake and their shackles are loosened. The gates are flung open. And the jailer, the Philippian jailer, he's like, oh no, the prisoners have escaped. I'm going to kill myself rather than let my superiors kill me. But Paul comes out and says, don't harm yourself, we're all here. And so then the Philippian jailer says, sir, what must I do to be saved? And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And so the, the jailer's household is baptized and they serve uh, hospitality. They have a meal for um, Paul and Silas. Pretty awesome. So then we come to page 27 where... Um, the magistrates, when they realize that Paul and Silas are Roman citizens, they're like, uh, we're sorry that we beat you and put you in prison. I want you to just leave quietly. And Paul's like, I don't think so. We want you to come and publicly apologize to us and escort us out of the city. And so they do. Um, and they want them to leave. But Paul doesn't leave quite right away because he goes back to Lydia's house and makes sure that she's okay and the church in Philippi is planted. It's really a great story. I love the Philippian story. And then we come to uh, this page I just painted earlier this morning. Um, so they travel from Philippi to Thessalonica, where they preach in Thessalonica in a synagogue. And many devout Jews, many Jews and devout Greeks join Paul and Silas. Devout Greeks means Greeks who were like following Judaism, but not fully, like probably uncircumcised. Um, but then some of the Jews became jealous of them, and they, it says they, they stirred up some roughhousers, and so some troublemakers, and they stir up the crowd. And so for some reason, Paul and Silas, they escape their wrath, and so they take it out on this guy named Jason. And so Jason, who is a Greek, um, he is brought before the Greek magistrates of Thessalonica, and he's accused of treason saying Jesus is king instead of the emperor. So this is getting pretty intense. And so uh, Paul, <clears throat> Paul and uh, the Thessalonians uh, encourage Paul and his party to flee. So they go to Berea. And in Berea, the, the Berean Jews in the synagogue, they wanna, they're curious about the Messiah, uh, Paul's account of the Messiah. So they want to study the scripture, and they do. And then... Um, those who were against Paul in Thessalonica, they are coming for Paul in Berea. And so the Bereans are like, run, Paul, run. And so Paul takes off by himself, leaves his party behind, and heads to Athens. And that is where we come today. Whew. So we're going to color, we're going to paint this story in Athens. And so let me switch over to my workspace and I got my music playing for you. And so now my storytelling part is done. If you have any questions about the story that we're in, about Acts, or about what I'm doing here in Photoshop, please feel free to, um, to drop a question or a comment in the chat. 
and I'll be checking the chat um, periodically. But now we're going to paint, and that's what we're here for, is painting, drawing the Bible. And in this case, I'm in the painting mode. And so what we've got here is this, well, let me show you the whole page first. So we've got Paul now comes into Athens, and it says that Paul notices that there are a lot of temples to multiple gods in Athens, and they, he sees that there's this temple to the unknown god. And uh, if you've been following this, it's really interesting that I actually drew this as one of the drawing sessions way back in the beginning of the live stream, but now I'm painting it, so that's cool. Um, so the people are like, what does this babbler want? He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. Now remember, Athens was, you know, the center of Greek philosophy. So a lot of smart people like to hang out and debate um, about the gods and ultimate reality and stuff like that. So Paul is dragged to this place. He's either dragged there as a prisoner or he's invited as a esteemed scholar. Scholars, our scholars debate that. Um, and so but he's on this place called the Areopagus. And if I, if I uh, get rid of this background, you can see I have the word Areopagus, which is translated Mars Hill, or the Hill of Mars, Ares, or the Hill of Ares, actually. So, uh, and that's where they debated important trials and decision-making in the city of Athens. So I hope that we can get to that panel to paint today. But in keeping with my process here is I'm just inviting you in wherever I am in, the, in the, the process of it. So what I've done so far before we went online is I've set up this panel. So I've already painted the background. And then we've got this back color, which is actually, um, oh, I just realized I need to cut part of that out. I've got this front building. And I've got this color here. But this back color, I want to cut this building out. So I've got a polygonal cutting tool, masking tool. I can just do that. And if I Command X, I cut that out and hit Command Shift V. And then I bring it up here. And then I, if I just hit Merge Down, now that front part is part of the front buildings. And the reason I do that is because I want my shadows to go behind this front building as I'm painting. So um, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and put in the local color of each of these characters. And I'll start with Paul. And I use my little detail gouache brush to do this. And as you know, Lana my beloved wife and assistant in this project comes in and does all of these block colors for me, which saves me so much time. And I, I wouldn't be able to do this project without her. And so she just takes one, one solid color and fills in my ink to give me a, a basically a mat, a mask to work with. And then if I hit alpha lock on this layer, oh, see, I didn't hit alpha lock before I colored that beard. I need to hit alpha lock. And then see when I'm out here, nothing happens. But then when I come inside, it alpha lock just lets you uh, paint on pixels that already exist. And so then uh, I'll come to Paul's outer tunic. I just use a basic brown for that. It's kind of my color scheme for Paul's outfit. Make my brush bigger. Now I could hit just G and fill this, you know, with the paint bucket, but I like to do my coloring with this detail because it, it's not perfect. It has a little bit of texture to it and I, I like that. I want that. Okay, so I'm going to come to this character and I have chosen to give all the characters, no matter where, what region they're from, everybody gets black hair, super dark hair, because we are in the Mediterranean region. And they're just, there may have been, 
a handful of blondes around that were like stolen, that were slaves from Germania. But they're the exception. And so I'm making sure that everybody has dark hair in this Mediterranean region. Because we've got, whether you're from Palestine, Syria, Greek, Egypt, Ethiopia, the people in those regions typically have really dark hair. And at the lightest, a brown skin. So I've been trying to be faithful to that reality. So, I'm gonna turn my music down just a tad. Um, okay, so I come back to here. And since we're in Greek, Greece, I've chosen to use just like basic white, white tunics. Sandra Olson, thanks for the invite today. I have to leave early today, but it's fun to learn about both the story and the process. You bet. Sandy, thanks for joining me. Glad you uh, find it interesting. It's really fun to do. Thanks for being here. Thanks for saying hi. And if you guys have been following along, if you're watching this after the fact, um, most weeks on Saturday mornings, just for fun, I take this recording and I put it into a 60 second recap and and then I post it as a reel on Instagram and a YouTube short and I think I also yeah I also do it as a Facebook reel part of this Part of the reason I'm doing this is I'm just trying to learn the social media platforms a little bit better. Okay, what color do I want this? I think I want this to be the same color as the other buildings. Now at first it's gonna seem like these are just gonna blend in with everything in the background, but since they're on a different layer, you will see that Oh, Evangelist Tariq, would you like coming to my country, Pakistan? Oh, uh, I'd love coming to your country, Pakistan. Uh, if you've got a budget for it, <laughs> man, that would be so cool. If we could find the funds. Okay, let's see. All right. And then this color for the tunic, making this for the person whose head is covered. Got a lot of different kinds of people in this, in the, in the Athens. I think Athens at this point in the first century was more diverse and multicultural probably than other parts of the empire. But don't quote me on that. Oh, I found a place where I need to fill in a little bit more of the color. So I just undid my alpha lock there and made that possible. And let's make this a dark horse, dark horse. Not the comics coming. Okay. So I think I've got the basic. Yeah, see, just even that makes such a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now. I think I'm going to do. I think I am going to take the time to do one more thing in this back color area. And I'm going to take my polygonal tool and I'm just going to cut out this building. 
Since this is, oops. Bummer. I need, I'm gonna go a different direction for this. I'm gonna cut out this building. Actually, I'm just gonna cut out the, the gate and make it its own layer. Put that in place, put it behind the back color and then just label it gate. It's always good practice to label your layers so you don't get confused. So now if I hit um, alpha lock on this and I'm just going to choose my watercolor brush, set it to a multiply mode. And the cool thing about multiply is I just have to choose the color that I'm on and it darkens it and layers it just like automatically. It's really cool. I don't want to get crazy detail in this because th my point here is not to do a detailed illustration. My point is to indicate, to give the viewer enough information to imagine Athens. But see why I cut that out? Because I can paint right here and I get that nice clean edge between the highlight of the building. So I, I've chosen to set this in the day and my light source is coming uh, from the left, like upper left coming down. That's kind of a default way that our brains think about, at least in the West, uh, our brains think about um, light. And so if I just cast my shadows from the top left, I want to be fairly loose with this, but I really, I've come to really like this watercolor brush. And so if I make it a little bit smaller and just do some straight lines with these Greek columns, now I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to come over here and just throw a little blue in under the shadows just to cool off the shadow a little bit because it's a morning light and mostly because I really want to contrast it from this front building. Okay, that's probably enough. So now I can go to this building and alpha lock that building and I'm still in um, well the first thing I'm going to do is make big distinctions between if my light source is coming from the upper left then this whole side of the building needs to be uh, in shadow and so I'm going to Ooh, that's too much. I want to come to my blue, make this really big. I'm just lightly touching that. You can see by having cut that out, my front building just really pops against that. And so that's, that's important. So let's just do a little bit more shading here. So I just want I just want to do some shading behind these pillars so that they stand out. See lights and shadows are relative to what your what's in front of it. So by dropping a little shadow behind those, those pillars stand out from their background, even though they are significantly darker than these pillars here in the foreground. Just basic perspective of light and dark. Again, I'm not trying to create this amazing 
um, illustration. But see, also what's happening is in the foreground here, by doing these shadows like this on a separate layer, it's allowing my little vendor booth to um, to stand in contrast. So you can really see it stand out. Just putting some indication of blocks. Okay. I think that's all I want to do there. So now I'm going to switch gears and, oh, actually, I want to keep that just a little bit. I want to keep that shadow color going just a little bit on the underhang of this building and right here. And the back shadows of this, of these columns. Again, just keeping it loose. And now I'll switch to the, to multiply the local color, which gives it a little bit of a warmer, a, a little warmer color hue to match that this is, this is in the sunlight now. So I'm just using color temperature as a way to um, create perspective. We're trying to anyway. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to take my detail brush, which is in normal mode, and I just want to uh, pop some highlights on the building. This front fascia is probably going to have a lot of... See, if I pop some highlights in here, then it helps those pillars to stand out against the, uh, the wall in the background. All right, that's probably good enough for that. Now let's zoom out a little bit and we're gonna do a similar thing to for this building. So I gotta come up here to front building and uh, let's just choose a color from somewhere in there. Go back to my real watercolor, take it to multiply and Now if I hold, instead of doing a mask for this, if I just don't lift up my brush, oh bummer, just realized that I am in, um, I have not alpha locked. So I went out of bounds there, which I don't want to do. And on this, this particular brush, if I don't lift up, it'll give a fairly even wash. You notice if I come, so I lift it up and if I come back, um, because I'm in multiply mode, it makes it darker. So just, just real quickly was able to So now I'm just casting, oh, you know what? So that, okay, this is gonna be interesting. I'm trying to create cast shadows from these pillars.
like that. Just to give it a little bit of interest. Then just drop a little shading on the side of the pillars. Like that. And now I'm going to switch to this layer or this color to put in. The indication of blocks. Like that. And again, not trying to be super detailed. But because I am on separate layer, I don't have to worry about these figures in the front. I just go right, right behind them. Now I'm going to switch mode just for a second and I want to drop in some like gold highlights like that. Probably want to do that back here too. Subtle but interesting. And then come back here to the front building back here put in some white just pop in some highlights to these pillars all right boom maybe just a touch of a highlight on the corner there all right there we go that is background. Oh, over here. Let's go back to our multiply mode on this watercolor brush. Choose this. And see how these are kind of close. I want to go back to that gate. And just darken, just darken that up a little bit to give more of a contrast between that front pillar and that back gate. Excellent. All right, so now we're in the front color, and keep that. I'm gonna alpha lock that. Am I on the right one? Yep. So now I just want to very quickly use these colors to create some three dimensionality to this shape in a really basic way. Do the same thing here. And I'm using watercolor brush because I purposefully want to have that texture because I like that texture to it. Okay, let me zoom in here. And just get Throw in a little bit of shading on these little. So these are, I'm kind of being playful with this because these are little statues of Greek gods that you could buy and have in your home. Just imagining like the marketplace of how, because we, we learn later in Ephesus that the silversmiths were afraid that people 
abandoning the gods was going to cut into their business, and we did not want that to happen. And I know I'm imposing my capitalist culture mindset over top of the Greek trade of idol making and I'm pretty positive that I'm misreading this but uh, it's mostly just for fun for my, on my part for me haha <laughs> okay multiply so now we're now I'm <clears throat> just gonna pop in some basic shading doesn't take much for these characters in the background just to pop in a little bit of shading to give some dimensionality to it. I like these ones way in the background. Really only need pop, 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 and that's it. And this horse. Okay, but now we're going to come up here and do Paul. Notice what I'm doing is I'm just, I choose the eye, which is the eyedropper, to choose the local color. And then because I'm in multiply mode with my airbrush, it is taking that color and making this transparent wash over it that gets darker every time I pass over it. It's multiplying. Again, my light source is coming from the upper left. Just trying to keep that in mind. Okay, now I have my basic shading done. Now I'm just gonna pop, oh, I gotta do this guy. And I'm going to come off of multiply and just fill this in with a darker. There we go. To the unknown God. And Paul's going to use that. So I intentionally put this in the foreground because this is how Paul is going to connect the message of Jesus to the Greek mind. Altar to the unknown God. He says, I see that you are a religious people and I honor that in you. And let me tell you who I think the unknown God is. That's in the next couple panels that we see that. Okay, I'm gonna take my airbrush, switch to overlay mode, come to make it smaller, and then just pop in some highlights. And these highlights are what really make the characters pop. Contrast in light and dark. Here we go. So highlights tell you where your light source is coming from. So painting, one of the primary things about painting is creating volume through light and dark. If you're a representative representational artist like I am. Representational meaning you're trying to make things 
appear to have some semblance to how we perceive it in reality, as opposed to an abstract artist who is more concerned with the surface of the painting and the, the media itself and the emotion that it evokes. I'm not an either or thinker on that. I think there's a place for all of it, of course. I just like drawing, uh, trying to convey form and shape. It's just how I roll. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. All right, how are we doing? Let's see. I think the only thing I want to do on this is hit this little God's piece with some highlight and hit this piece with some highlight to the unknown, just to make that, just to draw attention to that. All right. I think that's that panel. So now it is uh, quarter till. So what I want to do now is I, I'm going to skip. I'm going to take a drink first. And I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip this panel and just end my <laughs> session with this big panel because it just looks so much like so much fun to paint. And so um, this is group three. Yep. And so I just want to hide all the word balloons and I just want to show you how I'm going to paint this. So I see Lana has done the back color like this. So first thing I want to do is just take these foreground trees and all I have to do is loop around like that, cut them paste them in place call this trees and this is going to be in the front uh, so my back color is there and my regular color is there my character color is there all right and what is layer 11 I don't know what layer 11 is huh, okay do alpha lock on this and so I'm just going to start doing a big, fun, loose landscape painting. That's why I was looking forward to this. Um, I'll just show you how I kind of roll with this landscape. So now I'm in normal mode with my watercolor brush. I'm going to lay in this sky. And I think I do want to do this like in a bright noonday type of a, a sky. Because I think it'll be more appealing maybe I'll have the sun setting in the next one just to make it um, seem like the passing of time yeah that'll, that's a good idea thanks I thought it was a good idea too So I just choose a, a, a little bit more gray and darker color to do those distant mountains. Then I'm going to come up here to ink and actually erase those mountain. Those uh, I like to erase the ink lines on the distant mountains. And that really helps push them back even further into the background. Come back to this layer and back to my watercolor brush. Just 
go slightly darker. Just to throw some shading in the distant mountains. Make this mountain a little bit darker, but not too much. And then <clears throat> I'm going to come up here to my yellow and start laying in some, some greens. Now, what I want to do in this section right here is show like the rest of Athens in the background. And so I'm going to just lay an under lay of green, maybe put some trees back there. Put some cypress trees coming up like that. And then choose this uh, building color, which, oh, by the way, I think want this building color to be a little bit more yeah a little bit more white so I'm taking that building color and then I'm just gonna indicate like buildings in the background with it to show that we are in a city, an ancient city. And again, these are just soup. These are basically just blobs, right? Because they're in the distance, but that just kind of indicates that there's something, that there's some structures back there, right? So that's pretty much all I want to do for the, the background of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and take my detail brush and I am going to, I'm going to choose that gray and I'm just going to quick do basically like another mask, but without masking. And oops. Oh, bummer. I did this. I did that on the wrong layer. I want to do this on the back there. There. Nope. I did it again. I want to be on. There we go. Ah, the beauty of digital art. You make a huge mistake like that. Command Z, baby. That's all it takes. The magic undo button. One of the many, many reasons I like digital art. Except for the fact that this whole file could just blip and go away. Save often. And yes, that has happened to me. It was horrible. How are we doing? We got about seven minutes left. Let's see what I can get done on this. So make my brush really big and just kind of do some big blocky, I'm just blocking in this color. First, these are big rocky outcroppings. Now let me just change the tone of this gray of just a little bit as we get closer to the foreground. So I'm just going to have two toned layers of rocky outcropping here. So this is the Areopagus. The Hill of Mars, of Aries, actually, Aeropagos, and the Roman name for Aries is Mars, and so this came to be known as Mars Hill. And then lots of ministries have called themselves Mars Hill, 
Lots of people have talked about Mars Hill. What was Paul up to in Mars Hill? And now I'm painting Mars Hill. So I got my reference for this from uh, Google Earth. I love that. I've been trying to do that just like when I was doing my research uh, for this. Just flew around the world on Google Earth. It's a great way to do it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is switch back to my watercolor brush and and switch it to multiply and just start laying in some some darks this is just a random right just trying to create some sense of rocky outcroppingness and then in just a minute, I'm going to throw in some trees down here. So there's like a walking path from the Areopagus to the um, Acropolis. This is the Acropolis here in the background. And I don't care if I'm overlapping here because I can pop highlights into that. So if I just, if I just throw in, again, I'm using upper left is my light source because that's kind of a default mode. Let me switch from multiply to normal and come and, and just put in some indication of trees down here. But I also want to take this and do You know what, I think I'm going to use my airbrush for that. Do you want to diffuse this just a little bit? And then come back in with my watercolor. Put some trees over the top of that. Now I'll take detail brush, just kind of knock back, reestablish some edges on this. And you know, I think since since I'm in a different plane here. I am going to use this detail brush to just start blocking in some more opaque planes. That's too dark. So I'm to be subtle at first. And see how since I put those trees in the foreground, I don't even have to worry about them because they're on a different layer. And I'll mess with them in a minute. So this brush that I'm using is an opaque detail brush. So I, everything I'm going over is just going to cover what's, what's above it. So if I just make subtle variations in the color. Just, just trying to make it more interesting in the color. Well, my friends, um, we have come to the one hour mark and that has been my, my commitment to this live stream. So what I want to do is just, uh, Let's step back. I didn't get this one finished. Uh, this panel and half of this panel took an hour. So there you go. It takes a long time. And I've got this page and page 30 to do before the day is over. Um, but again, let me just say, 
thank you for being with me today. It's been so much fun. Thanks for those who uh, were on the chat. Um, if you're watching this later, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you're like me, I watch my favorite artists after the fact, and I just kind of fast forward <laughs> to the parts or just watch it at double speed or uh, that's totally, totally cool. Um, just uh, if you're still here and listening and care, I've got a couple announcements. Um, every, every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock, I go live on the Cartoonist Bible Network and I do a visual text study for the text from the Revised Common Lectionary and the Narrative Lectionary every single week. And that is for members of the Cartoonist Bible Network. And you can see a link to how to join that in the description. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel as I continue to visually think about scripture and spiritual formation and theology. And as we grow together deeper in the love of God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit for the sake of the world. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.